Good morning, everyone. Dignitaries on the dais. Yep. Dr. N. Kalai Selvi, Secretary, Department of Scientific and Industrial Research. Mr. Anil Rajdan, former Secretary Power and Chairman Energy and Environment Foundation. Dr. Gerg, former CMD Power Finance Corporation. Dr. Anil Gerg, President, World Renewable Energy Technology Congress, World Water Summit, and World Water to Wealth Summit. And Mrs. Ragini Gerg, support and force behind Dr. Gerg for all these conferences. Dignitaries of the dais, friends, distinguished speakers, delegates, it is my honor and privilege to welcome you all to this 14th World Renewable Energy Technology Congress, to the 7th World Water Summit, and World Ways to Wealth Summit and Expo. These three Congress and summits cover the whole gamut of sustainable solutions for mankind, for greener economy, innovative water solutions, and waste, waste to net zero. As we all know, Honorable Prime Minister has set a target for India to achieve net zero by 2070. This will entail decarbonization of the whole economy and all major sectors, being energy, industry, agriculture, transport. This will not be possible through ramping up renewable energy alone. We will have to work on newer technologies and make the technology affordable and sustainable. In this regard, recent policies and regulations on green hydrogen mission and green hydrogen mission announced by Government of India is welcome, and green hydrogen is, will provide sustainable solutions for hard to avoid sectors like steel, cement industry, shipping, aviation, and long distance trucking, for which viable solution lies through green hydrogen only, as of now. We have seen in last 14 years uh, how cost, uh, how government support, policy interventions, regulatory support, has accelerated growth of renewable energy. We remember when the first renewable energy con congress was held here. I mean, we were at a very, very small stage. Then technology improvements every year and volumes have driven the cost and prices down during last 10, 12 years. Prices of cells, modules, EV batteries, storage batteries have reduced by almost 50% and for cells and modules, even 80% from last 12 to 14 years, making solar, batteries, even wind more viable and almost as competitive as thermal power plants. Now the whole gamut of going green is primarily to cap warming, global warming to 1.5 degree and avoid extreme and devastating events. As per IPCC report, Total greenhouse gases will have to decline to net zero by 2050 if we have to limit to 1.5 degrees centigrade. Uh, and we have a budget of all, only 500 gigatons till 2050. And that is, that is the major issue that we have to tackle. Big challenge will be to decarbonize energy, transport and industry sector find more of nature-based solutions, and we will have to innovate fast to move towards net zero. Major crises are somehow taking us towards sustainable development and net zero. What we have seen, take for example, Russia-Ukraine war, and Russia cutting energy gas supplies to Europe has led to huge increase in investments toward RE and green hydrogen, manufacture of electrolyzers, et cetera, in Europe. Similarly, COVID-19 pandemic did highlight the perils of depending only on one country for supply and uh, the huge supply chain dis dis uh, disruptions happened. Now, whether it was only through China or Taiwan and everybody now, all countries are looking for domestic manufacturing, diversifying their supply chain and going f for, for working on sustainable solutions. As per... Uh, Energy sector uh, today contributes about 73% of global greenhouse gas emissions. 
To achieve net zero emissions, the sector has to decarbonize at an accelerated pace. At the same time, we have also to ensure that zero carbon technology should not increase co costs and prices and also should enhance energy access. That, that will be very, very important. We must also understand that electricity today contributes only 20% of the total energy. So we are concentrating only on electricity and this is likely to go up to maybe 50% by 2050 and maybe 80% by 2070 or 2080. But there is a, but still uh, there is a huge gap between the energy and electricity. Heavy industry, primarily cement, steel and chemicals, utilize large amounts of fossil fuels. Technological interventions in the next 20 years can save almost 40% of the existing emissions in this, this sector. Innovative technologies like uh, green hydrogen, carbon capture and storage could play a critical role in abating these emissions. Nature-based systems to protect natural ecosystem for production of food, fiber and energy production. Uh, NBS systems like reforestation could drive substantial CO2 sequestration. Nature-based system could help in achieving almost 29% of the reductions needed to be on 1.5 to 2 degrees Celsius. Combustion of fossil fuel contribute to more than 25% of air pollution and deaths globally. Therefore, moving towards RE will bring in added health benefits, improving air quality. Now, my idea of giving these facts and figures is to highlight the magnitude of challenge and how the topics that we will discuss in next two days are relevant and how these will help in addressing the large issues in front of us. Another key element in transition to clean energy is the role of critical minerals such as copper, lithium, cobalt and rare earth metals. The production of these crucial minerals for energy transition is more concentrated than supply of oil and gas which are reasonably more distributed or probably the explorations that we have done only show that this is available only in concentrated area. The high level of concentration is further compounded by complex supply chains. Some country is the owner, somewhere it is processed and then, so this, this creates more complex web. But the silver lining in all this is that these metals are recyclable. So eventually, once these are mined, these are available for our consumption. Now, energy transition cannot happen without availability of these critical metals. Just to give you an idea, a typical electric car requires six times the mineral input of a conventional car. And offshore wind plant requires 13 times more mineral and resources than a similarly sized gas fired plant. The requirement of these minerals has gone up by just 50% in the last 10 years, but is likely to go up by four to six times in the next 20 years. For the demand for lithium tripled in the last five years, in 2017 to 22, demand for cobalt increased by 70% and nickel increased by 40%. This has happened primarily because of rapid increase in electric mobility, storage batteries, solar PV installations. Uh, the key point is that the market size for these metals today has gone up to $300 billion, which is equivalent to that of the iron ore. So you can understand how big the market for these minerals has become. Even critical mineral supply is also a source of concern for China, which heavily relies on uh, Democratic Republic of Congo for cobalt. And also, it has invested heavily in acquiring lithium assets outside of China. Since 70% of the batteries are produced in China, they are 
I mean, we, we feel that China is sourcing, but they are also concerned. So this will be a major concern, and we will have to look at it strategically. Now, recently, export curves on Chinese, gallinium, and germanium had highlighted the significance of lesser known minerals to our energy transition. And I mean, highlighting the overall importance of these critical minerals. Now, decarbonization of transport sector and grid integration of intermittent renewable is possible only through EV and storage batteries. And low role of batteries is becoming increasingly important with reduction in cost by making it viable for upgradation of mini grids, self-consumption of rooftop solar, and of course, making transport sector much more cheaper and viable. The new business models that we see are young ecosystem is generating, is also making it possible to accelerate penetration of two-wheelers and four-wheelers. The huge innovation cannot happen, at least in India, relying on imports. And therefore, GOI has rightly invested huge sums in production-linked incentive schemes for cells, modules, batteries, etc., to make our transition sustainable. The second theme, uh, th second summit is innovative water solutions for sustainable growth. Though we know that there is abundance of water on the planet, only 2.5% is fresh water, and remaining 97.5% is salt water. Further, only 0.3% of the total water can be potentially utilized for human consumption as 70% of the Earth's fresh water is in Arctic and 90% of this is in the form of ice sheet. The per capita availability as per one study is likely to go down by 10% in next decade. Further, one-sixth of the people in the world do not have access to clean water and on top of that, every day, 2 million tons of sewage and industrial waste is discharged into rivers. Therefore, there is a great need for innovative water solutions for sustainable growth, which we will be discussing in the next two days. Theme for the third summit is smart waste solutions for net zero. We all know that best way to manage waste is to reduce creation of waste, reuse what is possible, and recycle and recover. India produces about 62 million tons of waste every year, out of which only 70% gets collected and 20% of the total waste gets treated. Now, if you look at if only 80% of the total waste in our cities remain untreated, one can imagine what havoc this will cause to the environment. Therefore, we need to work on simple but innovative solutions for waste management. Uh, burning is one solution, but there are other solutions, chemical solutions, which we should work on. I am sure the deliberations in the Congress in two summits will showcase solutions that work and can be scaled up. Further, the knowledge sharing and technology display will be rewarding experience for all of us to help in further our resolve for green and decarbonized economy. I am sure each one of us will have a lot to take away at the end of the, these two days. I once again welcome you all and wish the con Congress great success. Thank you very much. Thank you.